Hi, uh, this is the fabric haul, the massive fabric haul uh, video part two. Um, I'm a couple of days late um, for those of you watching in the back. Um, I was supposed to have this video up last week and um, mom wasn't doing so good. And so she actually got to take a ride in a helicopter from our local hospital to another medical facility in uh, Colton. And she is now back home. Everything is good. And so kind of normal life is starting to come back and we're starting to catch up just a little bit. So here we are. And uh, first one up, this is from Joanne. This is another item from their clearance section. This is taffeta. It's kind of a olive with a, um, I don't know, maybe a navy blue shift. Camera's picking that up just a little bit. I don't have a plan for this. I bought what they had on the bolt and I think it was about two and a half yards. Um, this will this will probably be a dress, although if there's enough of it, I could see this being like a really pretty uh, dress jacket, like an outerwear jacket, sort of in a trench coat style, but just, uh, you know, oomphed up a little bit for a, a dress coat. So we'll see what happens. Um, next one up is from Mood Fabric, and this is, so I bought this online. Um, the description on the website said that this was an Italian taupe with light stripes and it's a stretch polyester, but it's definitely a gray. Those stripes are pink, just a really soft pale pink. It's really pretty and the fabric actually is fairly comfortable. Um, it's got a decent drape to it. Unfold this a little bit here. There we go. So it definitely has nice drape but it still has some structure to it this will be a business suit um, I probably have enough here I bought four yards I probably have enough to do um, a jacket pants and a skirt and this would be not for me because I don't need I don't need a business suit um, this I took a chance on with moods website uh, this was in their sale or their clearance section normally when I'm buying from an online retailer for fabric, I'll order a, uh, a swatch first. Um, that way I know exactly what I'm getting, but this, th that fabric wasn't reorderable because it, it was on clearance. So I'm, I'm glad I took the chance. It's, it's nice. This is another batch of suiting. There's about two yards here. This came from Joanne clearance. Um, so it's a black polyester. It's a little bit thicker. This does not stretch. And that pink pinstripe is really cute. So I definitely have enough here to make a jacket and a skirt. I don't know that I have enough to do a jacket and pants. Um, and it's a little bit thicker. So this definitely wouldn't be a, a summer wear, but that's okay. It's black. So there's that. Um, what do I want to show you next? Okay. How about this? Uh, this came from Mood. This is a jersey knit. Um, so it's a polyester rayon blend. I got, what did I get here? Three yards. And there it is. So it's just a really light mint green, kind of a seafoam green, I guess you'd call that. And this, uh, I, again, I got three yards of it. Um, this is going to be a nightgown for somebody this is happening. It's very comfy and it'll wash well. It'll wear comfortably. So I went for it. Okay. Um, so from, I'm showing you the swatch on this because the fabric actually arrived in this giant tube here. My UPS and FedEx drivers are starting to love me because I'm getting these massive long boxes and they're like, what are you ordering? Um, so this actually is the swatch of that fabric. It's a rayon and I just, I thought the print was really pretty. Again, on this website, I bought the swatch because this was on clearance, but the cool thing with the websites is they will tell you how many yards are left on their, really on every product that they have. So they had something like, I don't know, I think 40 or 50 yards of this left. So I figured I had time to get the swatch and check it out. 
And so on my next fabric.com order, I went ahead and ordered enough to make a dress. This one will be for me. Um, and I ordered seven yards of this. So this will make a really nice spring summer dress. Um, it is just barely see-through. So a super thin lining on this would be good and it'll be all set. Okay. Uh, ooh, packages from Etsy. Gotta love it. So this seller is in India and this is the, the seller that sells vintage silk series. So I got this time, this beautiful gray. Let's see here. So that is the trim design or the, the edge of it, if you will. And then here is the predominant print, which is that gray floral. It's really pretty. It's got some shades of blue, um, very, very faint grayish pink. It's absolutely beautiful. This is, I have a plan for this. Um, I'm going to be making a lot of neckties. And so you're going to start seeing a lot of those being posted uh, probably in the next week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, so ties. And then the second survey that I got, this one is super cool. I like this a lot. Um, so it's pinks and yellows, which is gorgeous. And then here's the, the yellow flower. It's absolutely stunning. This one had a little bit of damage to it, again, with that other Suri in, in my fabric haul video part one, where there was some damage where it was probably catching on shoes. Um, and they mended it on this instead of cutting that whole strip off, which is awesome because I can use um, most of it, which is fantastic. Um, I'm not sure on this one yet what will happen. So that this one's going to go in the I don't know box. Um, okay, so I have a thimble. I, I'll be right back. So I'm not flipping everybody off, I promise. I found this thimble in my great-grandmother's cookie tin. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a cookie tin that I found it in. So this would be my dad's grandma. And it fits perfectly on my finger. When I am working, it's great. But I've noticed as the weather is cooling, my finger is a little bit smaller. And so it's not, right now it's okay, but it's not quite so secure, especially in the evenings when I'm hand stitching. And I'm almost always hand stitching in the evening and I start to get a little bit chilly because the sun's gone down. So I thought, you know what? I don't want to mess around with trying to find another really cool thimble. Uh, let's make a leather thimble, right? They're comfortable. Um, I can have a different size when I need it. So I only need like a three inch square piece of leather to make a thimble, which of course you can't buy just three inches of leather unless you want to pay for like a, a thimble kit. And they, they do have those on um, Etsy and a couple of other online retailers. So I found this cool place called Fab Scrap and they're out of uh, New York and they actually partner with the garment industry to recycle and repurpose and resell all of the scraps and yardage that is overage on their garment making process instead of throwing it in the trash, which is an awesome idea. They sell leather scraps by the pound. Now, some of the stuff that I got in here is obviously not leather, um, but that's okay because they're kind of fun. Like these three strips here, I mean, they're full on plastic, um, but they're kind of cool. I don't know what I would do with them, but I'll figure something. Actually, they would make really handy bookmarks now that I think about it. So anyway, in this, I got like the bottom of a purse, right? And it's stamped here with a the brand. There's a couple of studs in it, uh, but there's really good leather on this. Um, so I got some cool leather pieces, definitely enough to make myself a leather thimble. Here's some really nice orange and red. I've got blacks and browns, blues. And I think I might as well, since I have it, 
go ahead and make leather thimbles to sell while I'm at it. So I've got what I need to make myself a leather thimble for those cooler times of the year when I can't wear my metal thimble. And now I have another thing to sell like in quantity, which is awesome. Okay, um, what else we got? Ooh. All right, also a Joanne clearance. I've got this, uh, it's Quilter's Cotton. It's their Keepsake Calico Quilter's Cotton. Um, so it was the end of the bolt. I have six or seven yards here. I don't remember exactly how much. Uh, and then this was the end of the end of the line. This will be a dress. Again, cut on the bias because it is just that, you know, cotton. There's no give, there's no stretch, no movement really to it. And um, I'm just, I'm really vibing these kind of vintage -y floral designs. And when they're on clearance, I can't, I can't argue with that. So um, same thing happened with this one. So again, end of the bolt here. Um, I think there's only five yards here. And I think there's actually two yards on this from the feel of it. But this actually is a kind of a mint floral on a black background. It's really cute. Again, another dress. Not for me. Um, for whoever buys it. Which is coming very soon. Um, so this is just a pale mint. It's very silky feeling. And I've got six, uh, six yards of this. It almost uh, it almost feels like peach skin. Let's pull this out here. So it's got this really nice drape to it. And what I want to do with this is, again, uh, a dress. But I want to do a little bit of lace overlay, like at the collar, on the sleeves, um, and possibly the full skirt itself. So um, not really... This isn't a lining, um, but it will act as that kind of for the lace itself. So I have a plan for that. This is very similar, but it's a lilac. It's a very pale lilac. And again, it's kind of a peach skin. Um, and I'm seeing some kind of a textural overlay to it, whether it's uh, lace or possibly appliques. There we go. Okay. Masks. So I got a bunch of really cool fabric squares for masks. I'm going to move these closer so you can see. A lot of these are super amazing. And I got these from our local fabric retailer. So this has geckos. And we've got crabs. <laughs> hey, YouTube, I've got crabs. Sorry, moms. And then we've got turtles, which are awesome. So all of these um, will be the, the outer facing of the mask, and then the inside facing will be just a solid print cotton. Or, I'm sorry, a solid cotton. It won't have a print to it. At first, I thought this was fish, but it actually is just a geometric design that I thought was really nice. I uh, figured if I'm going to go ahead and start putting things out there for sale, I might as well go ahead and do what started this whole thing. And... So some masks. Uh, so these will actually be the 3D shaped masks. They won't be the accordion fold and they will have elastic cord instead of the fabric ties. Um, since I'm selling them, I can justify the extra expense in materials to do that. And elastic now has gone down quite a bit. Um, also, it's a little more available than it was in April and May. So I'm not sure if you can see, I'm trying to catch this just right. This actually has gold metallic in it, which is what caught my eye. Uh, it's nice and bright and pretty. And then this one here also has metallic. It's a little bit easier to see on that darker fabric. And we've just got a bunch of them. So here's a green. These are kind of like, uh, they remind me of fireworks. This abstract, you can't see that. Abstract, kind of a um, dark red. And then here's the same print in an olive green. I've got leaves, and this is metallic, and then the same thing in black. Those would be great for, you know, a night out. This one I thought was really nice. Um, this also is metallic, that gold. All of these are super, super soft, so they've got a really soft hand to them. They are machine washable, um, so I can, in good faith, 
make these as a face covering knowing that they can be cleaned properly. Uh, so that's got nice metallic in it too. Um, and then I got this in a couple of different colors. So here's the black and gold. We've got the purple, same print. And then here's a different shade of, actually, I guess this is on kind of a black background. And then this is on more of a purple and pink because you know gotta have something bright and pink i really like this print super amazing and i wish that i could i wish that she still had this on the bulb to sell because i would jump all over that this one is really cool too and again it's got that metallic in there this is amazing i love that print nice bright shiny and then here's the same print in blue I love this. Love, 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 love. Scott saw this and said, can I have that? So it's probably going to him. Same print, slightly different uh, shade of blue, as you can see here. And then this guy right here, also really pretty. It's got that nice metallic in there as well. Um, I have some other fabric squares to make masks out of. Um, I've got some Christmas prints and camo, of course, some Americana prints with like eagles, American flags, that kind of stuff, but there's plenty to show you here, and no, we're just naughty. <laughs> it's too much. All right, um, from Mood, this is 100% cotton. Is it 100%? How can that be? It is stretch cotton, and it's called Wisp of Wonder. It's on kind of a cream. So I got I got uh, two yards, three yards of this. I have three yards of this. I'm going to make myself a, a button-up shirt out of it. And same print. Scott saw it and said that it was really cool, but he wished it wasn't that cream color. And I said, well, you're in luck because they also have it on this dark blue. So I got um, four yards, three yards. To make him a dress shirt as well. This one will be a long sleeve uh, for the winter months, so that is coming up on my sewing rotation. Okay, um, I have a bunch of lining, and the reason for that I will get to in a minute. Um, this is from Mood. This is a baby modal. It's stretchy. When you're touching this in just like one layer, it feels like um, it feels like you're running your hand through cool water. Like it is just the softest, most amazing fabric ever. So I I got a couple of colors. I've got this seafoam green. Um, I have a black here. And then I also got this gray. And this gray one was the end of the bolt. So there's a little extra sticker on here that says that I got extra, which is kind of cool. Um, so nightgowns actually going to experiment with uh, making some comfy underwear because COVID weight gain and uh, I'm not going to the store because I don't know what size I am anymore. I just keep measuring myself, <laughs> shaking my head at the changes in the wrong direction and then making things that will fit. So that's where we're at right now. Um, okay, so I found this skirt I had to actually go inside our local Walmart. Um, oh, I was shopping for our Eagles fundraiser dinner. And uh, I took a tour through the women's undergarments section, like the lingerie section, if you want to call it that at Walmart. Realized that I have absolutely no clue what size I'm looking for for underwear anymore. And started walking away towards cash registers took me past their clearance rack and I see this poking out just a little bit. And I'm like, whoa, wait, what is that? Put my hand on it and it is a 4X skirt. It's horribly made. So here's the waistband that is meant, I don't know if you can see the stitching on there. So the waistband, of course, is stitched down on two sides, but then it flips up. It's see-through, but it's a really cute fabric, and it was 
$3. So then I was on the hunt for a lining to use with this to actually give it a useful life instead of just looking horrible on somebody or even worse, like just going in the trash. Um, so I went to Joanne because I broke a sewing needle at three o'clock in the morning. And so the next day I had to pick Scott up from the airport, got home in time before they closed, rushed in. I didn't even have a cart. I'm like, I just, I just need needles. Uh, oh, and white thread. I was out of white thread. Their clearance section is right next to all of their notions, of course, because they're smart like that, right? But this was on clearance. So this is a satin. It is definitely not a lining fabric. But for the price, I could justify buying it for the lining of the skirt. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that the right side of the lining is facing out so that you get that full shine when you do see it through. But isn't that gorgeous? I just felt like that was the perfect pink to add to that $3 skirt. So I will give this some new life and somebody will hopefully buy that and give it lots and lots of love. All right, so something else happened while I was in Joanne for needles, only needles. Um, I mentioned that I was going to start selling neckties for, uh, for sale to the girls that were working and um, cutting my fabric and it went from there. So it turns out that Julie, hey Julie, if you're, if you are catching this, I didn't forget. There you go. This was Julie's pick. She asked if I could please, please, please make her a necktie out of this. This is brocade and it is stunning. I have enough here to make three neckties. Uh, so she's getting one of them and then two will be listed for sale very soon. Um, so that is why I have a bunch of lining is for these ties. Okay, so now we're on tie mode. These all have an actual plan and in the next probably four or five days they'll all be cut up. So this is another brocade. I mean, how gorgeous is that? That's gonna make a fantastic necktie. All right, more brocade, this magenta. I fell in love with this when I saw it. And it's a good thing that Scott is not, you know, easily duped because I told him that I would be right back. All I'm doing is buying needles. I know exactly what size I need. I need needles and thread. That's it. I'm not going to get a cart, honey. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to get the needles. And when I was gone for an hour, I came home, came in with a hefty bag. And all he said was, is there more that you need help carrying in from the car? That's all he said. I was kind of impressed with that. And it made me giggle. Like he just, he knows. Here's another brocade for a necktie. Right there. So Scott has been really helpful in um, kind of navigating some logistics when it comes to actually turning this into a business and actually selling the garments that I'm um, putting together that I'm creating. Um, so he's he's been working behind the scenes with me on the weekends and in the evenings trying to sort through a lot of different things like clothing labels, um, website versus Etsy versus just word of mouth versus YouTube versus a combination. All of those things, he's, he's really been a great sounding board and, and very knowledgeable and helpful with that. So I'm glad, I'm glad that I've got that. All right, so these are super funky, uh, but they will be neckties. <laughs> How crazy is that? This, believe it or not, is 100% cotton. And listen. There's no lining in there. That is just the fabric. Super funk. Um, you cannot put heat to this. So getting... <laughs> Working with this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but they're so cool. And for a necktie, like, why not? Um, so that's what these are here. These are all one yard cuts. And this is kind of a snake skin and gold on a black. 
And again, that sound <laughs> it cracks me up. This one is really cool. This has got a softer hand to it. It's not as plasticky feeling. Um, it's just an iridescent purple. That was pretty. And then we have the red version of the snakeskin print, if you will. Thought it was kind of neat. These are definitely going to be ties that are not for the faint of heart. Let's put it that way. There we go. I like the color shift on this one a lot. And then we have this guy here. It's kind of a rainbow iridescent. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, last thing, because I had to go to Joanne. <laughs> had to go to Joanne yesterday, and I found this. So here's the here's the deal. I need bump fabric or, well, yeah, it's called bump fabric as an insert inside these ties. Um, and so on the brocades, it doesn't need to be very thick because the fabric is already super thick. But when I'm using the silks um, or even some of the cottons that aren't those, that isn't this already super rigid, the fabric needs to be a little bit thicker. And I realized that um, every time I've been in the clearance section at our, my local Joanne, there has been, I'll be right back, this hanging out there. And it is just 11 yards, we figured out yesterday, of drapery lining. But the thickness on it is just right to use in my cottons, which will be a big majority of the ties for now. Um, it's not quite thick enough for the silks, but that's okay because I've got some on the way from fabric.com. Fabric um, so anyway, I went to Joanne to get this yesterday because I realized that, that I've been seeing this sitting there. Nobody has picked it up. Nobody has run with it. It was a really good price. Of course, it's on the clearance rack and hopefully it's still there, right? So I go, it's still there. I grab it. But I had to move this off of this to get this. This is taffeta that has been sitting on top of that roll for as long as I can remember it, that, that I've been looking at those clearance racks. This has been sitting there. So I picked it up and I'm like, wow, there's a decent amount of this on there. I wonder what the price is. It's like a dollar eighty a yard, turns out. This started out as a nine or an eight bolt, eight yard bolt. What does it say on here? 10 yard bolt, 10 yards of taffeta. And it's pink that shifts to a little bit of an olive. Let's see if I can catch that on the camera. Are you catching that color shift at all? Um, so it started out as a 10 yard bolt. There were nine and a half yards on this thing. It's been sitting there for years, she said. And usually our local Joanne store doesn't get this much of this kind of fabric. They'll send just a couple of yards at a time. And then if it sells, they'll send more. So she wasn't sure even why it ended up in their store. And now I own it. It's mine. Um, I don't technically have a plan for this. This will be a dress of some kind. But other than that, I don't know. All I know is... You should never let me touch fabric when I'm in the store because then I'm probably going to bring it home at some point. And that's exactly what happened in this case. But, but I went and I got what I needed and I only bought one extra piece of fabric. So, and it's only one piece because it's all in one piece, right? So just because it's nine and a half yards, I guess, I don't know. Um, so update on the Myrna dress. Um, I didn't get it done yet. Um, I needed to finish curtains for Robert and Mary. Um, those are all done and I'm going to be installing those later this week. Today is Monday, uh, November 9th, November 9th. Um, I basically hid from social media the entire week of the election because I just, I, no, I, I voted, I did my thing. It, it'll get counted. We'll figure it out. I don't want to see everybody hating on everybody. So I just I kind of avoided it for a week. So I'm back. Um, got the curtains done and then realized that, oh my God, we're in November. And if I have any desire to sell anything in the Christmas market, I need to put everything fun for me aside right now, including the Myrna dress and just get to work. So that's where I'm at at this point. Um, 
so over here in the corner, Myrna, I'm draping. Um, so I haven't really started that process yet before, you know, so I haven't started a project yet with draping. Uh, I've done a lot of reading, studying, watching videos and, and how to's on how to kind of bring that into your design process. And so far I'm really liking it. And the cool thing is that it doesn't take very long. So when I'm sitting at the sewing machine or I'm standing at the cutting table or the ironing board and I just, I need to do something different for just a quick minute, um, just so I feel like I'm, uh, so I don't get bored. Let's face it, I get bored easy, right? Um, I can go over to Sally and kind of tweak that form and that shape and that design and play with it for like two or three minutes, get it out of my system a little bit and then go back to work. So yeah, I'm kind of digging it. Um, it's not even, well, it, actually it is kind of close. It is kind of close to the final shape that I want. It will have that deep V. I do like the idea of the, um, the self rosette right here in the center of the bust. I like the sloping off of the shoulder just a little bit. What I'm not sure about is the peaked shoulder um, or if I just want to have that drape off gracefully, kind of just flowing backwards. Um, without cutting the fabric, I've been sort of able to fashion it so that the, uh, it's, it's almost like a cape design in the back, but it's all really just one flowing piece of fabric. So I've been playing. Why not? Um, so I'll, I'll give you guys updates on that. But unfortunately, Myrna is hanging out uh, off camera over here. Um, I say hello and goodbye to her every time I come in the door because she's right by the door. But yeah, it's it's that time of year where I really just need to um, get to work. So um, I will have another update for you next week. It won't be a fabric haul. It'll be some kind of vlog, probably um, showing you how horrifyingly messy my craft room can be when I am going crazy working on everything. But I will get something uploaded so that moms and friends can see what's happening. And we'll just have to keep doing the YouTube thing until we can actually hang out together. All right. I hope everybody is, um, you know, hanging in there. I know this week it was rough um, and not being able to really do the normal things that we would, uh, you know, get together um, for long conversations face to face, um, have drinks, have dinner, sit around the fire and watch, you know, vote counts and, and all of those all of those things that are kind of tradition for all of us. Um, we're missing and I think that that had a big part to play in just the general feel for everybody so I'm hoping that uh, you survived it okay and come back next week and I should have another update for you and I hope everybody's doing well bye